Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today's video actually came to us as a request on Instagram by a fellow by the name of Aaron. And he was asking how to cut an interior groove in one of our milling machines. And it got me thinking about the fact that I've shown a lot of people over the years how to do this. But I think where people get most confused is the fact that we don't actually offer a canned cycle that does it for you. And the reason we don't, at least so far, is because there's a lot of variables involved, such as the size of the hole you already have, the size of the diameter of your tool, and so on and so forth. But I can't use a pocket to do something like this because in a pocket, even though I start in the center, eventually I'm gonna spiral my way out to the outside. And when it's done, it's only gonna move away the size of your finish cut before it moves straight up in the Z axis, which would cut through your part from the keyway slot on up, right? So I'm gonna explain what we did, but before I get started, I also wanna tell you guys that I'm using the RMX on the bed mill here, but this process is exactly the same in every Prototrack we've ever made. So all the way back to a PT or a PT Plus, this will work. It's really just a series of four arcs, okay? So I'm at the main screen and I'm gonna to go to the program screen and show you what I'm talking about. Now to make this easier for you to see, I actually put at the end of my program the size of the circle that's in my piece part right here. Okay, so the interior circle that you see right here, not the very outer one, but the interior one depicts the size of my circle, which is a three inch diameter. And what I'm actually doing here, if you see here, I use an irregular profile. Now, if you're using an older product that didn't have irregular profiles, this would just be uh, continuous milling events from one to the next, only their arcs, not the actual straight lines. So here's my irregular profile and I'm telling it where I wanna start. You can see right here by that dot that it's starting over here. My starting position is totally gonna come from the fact that the arc I wanna use to arc into the groove has to be larger than the size of the radius on my tool because I'm actually offsetting so my tool is really gonna be in here, okay? So I'm gonna determine that and then just take from that section all the way into where I have the depth of my groove. My groove in this particular case is about 100 thousandths deep, all right? So I'm telling it here that I wanna offset to the left because I'm gonna climb mill this. I'm gonna do it in one pass and I'm gonna leave a 10 thousandths finish cut just to make sure that I get a nice finish inside of there. Uh, depending on the importance of the groove, you may not even need the finish cut. And then of course, just my feeds and speeds. So after I give my starting point, you'll see as it highlights here, I have my first small arc that comes into the groove, right? Then I have a half an arc that is all continuously in the groove, right? 180 degrees worth. I'm gonna come back to where that arc started, and then I'm gonna have one more smaller groove to end up at my beginning point. Okay, so think of the whole time that that tool is offset to the left as it rotates through, and you're gonna see when I run it that it actually comes out to this point and then offsets for the finish cut and takes another pass just to clean it up and make it look good. Now I also wanna tell you that I previously cut the part just so that we don't have to have the chips, the coolant, the air, all the extra noise and things that makes the video harder to see and understand. So when we run it, it's actually not going to cut anything and you'll be able to see real well how it works, okay? So to get you started on here, um, I'm just gonna go over to the run mode, of course. And as usual, I'm gonna push the start button and then I'm gonna wait till it gets ready to start. And then I always have the choice of tracking or CNC run, right? I normally tell you guys, uh, if you've never done this before and you're doing it for the first time, Cutters are expensive. You're probably gonna use tracking. Make sure you get into the right place. You might even switch back to tracking when you know you're at about the end just to make sure that it's gonna come up in the clear. Okay, I already know that it's correct, so I'm just gonna go to CNC run and let it run, okay? So I'm gonna do so like so. It tells me when I'm ready, push go. Select go right here, and now it's telling me to make sure I got the right tool in there and all that stuff. Turn on my spindle, and then of course push go.
Okay, so as you can tell, uh, we're sitting here at the end of the run, and uh, as usual, it's telling me that uh, I'm all done. So if I had multiple parts, of course, I could set the next one up and run it again. But what you actually saw here was that uh, the spindle came down into the middle of the hole where there was clearance, cut both uh, tool pass going around for the rough cut and then the finish cut, went back to clearance and came out. I do want to mention that there is another way to do this if you have enough clearance. It might be that all you need to do is have a straight line that starts in the middle of the hole, comes in at say 3 o'clock, goes all the way around past 3 o'clock to say 12 o'clock, and then another straight line out. So if there's enough room between the size of your hole and the size of your tool radius, you could do it by a milling event at the beginning, two arcs, and a milling event at the end. Either way, as long as you've got the clearance for the cutter to come in and come out, uh, it'll work out perfectly. So you have those two choices, all right? I do wanna mention also that, like I said before, there's not a can cycle for this because this is really more a matter of doing some simple stuff and doing what we call outsmarting the control. So you're just telling it exactly what you wanna get out of it. It's very simple to do. Uh, I know that sometimes when people are first getting started with our controls, they're not as brave to make up their own stuff that's not in a can cycle. Um, as you get a little more familiar and uncomfortable, you will have uh, uh, the nerve to go and try to do stuff like this, but this should walk you right through how to do it on any size. Just make sure that your tool fits inside of the geometry you're trying to work. And if it doesn't, it'll probably tell you so anyway. Um, I think this should help you. Once again, I would really like to thank Aaron for giving us the idea and remind the rest of you out there that if you've got something you'd like to see on video and you think it'd be helpful, let us know. We'd like to make that video too because it'll be beneficial to the other people watching as well. In the meantime, I'm tracking Pat and remember as always to keep on tracking. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat today here with all the girls from my family and we want to thank you for watching all of our videos. As always, we know you get a lot out of them and we really enjoy doing them for you. But today we're actually on our way to the beach. But before we go, we want to remind you that if you haven't subscribed yet, just push the button over here on our left. And if you want to watch the next video, just push the one on the right. Kinley and the rest of them would like you all to remember to give me a big thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to keep on tracking it.